special to play with today, a new drone. Some of you have seen me flying it on my Instagram account and I'm pretty sure no one wants to watch me just sit here and talk about it. So let me put it together and tell you a bit about it. This is the Swan Voyager. It's from XGQ, a local Shenzhen company made up of former DJI employees. Now, this isn't a quadcopter style drone like a lot of you are used to seeing, or even the more unusual fixed wing drone. It's both. It's a Voltor drone. That's VTOL or vertical takeoff and landing. That means it flies straight up, turns 90 degrees, and goes straight. But a quadcopter can do that anyway, right? Yes but wings give you lift without having to use as much power, so you can fly much, much further and stay up longer. Fixed wing motor craft have a long and goofy history. It's quite difficult to actually make something like this work in the real world at large scale. But at small scale, with smart computers to balance the drone and do most of the flying for you, it turns out it works really well. Okay, here it is. I'd say allow about five minutes for assembly. So the drone has one wing ending in these little winglets and uses four propellers in a tractor configuration. That means they pull the craft through the air, not push. And those are located in these nacelles at the end of four pylons. The body of the plane is a high quality polystyrene, which sounds bad, but it's actually light, durable, and very, very easy to repair, which if you fly anything like I do, is definitely something to think about. Although I haven't crashed this yet, it's really pretty easy to fly. It has a pan to camera on the front for navigating, and one of my favorite things is the controller. It's all in one with a screen and everything built in. No more trying to run dodgy apps on my phone and link everything up or any of that nonsense. I'll get into that more in a minute. For now, let's get out of this stuffy workshop and do some flying. I asked the folks at HEQ for a CAD file of the Swan Voyager fuselage. Using that, I with a 3D printed mount for my 360 camera. The 4K camera that the drone comes with shoots decent quality video, but I'm not good at flying and aiming it at the same time. If I mount my 360 camera, I can compose my shots in post-production. Setting up the Swan Voyager when you have a new takeoff location is a bit of an adventure. The app is supposed to walk you through it, but it really isn't clear and the documentation is still being written. Hopefully, it will be done by the time the drone ships. It works perfectly fine once you know how to do it. But the first few times, it may take 5 to 10 minutes to calibrate it. Once you do, it's time to fly. Since the Swan Voyager is a Voltor drone, it goes straight up then turns 90 degrees and goes forward. That's all automated. You don't have to do anything. This is my neighborhood in the Longgang district of Shenzhen. I am in the upper middle class community in the middle of a very working class area. We are on the outskirts of Shenzhen. I know parts of it look a little shabby from the air. A lot of these buildings were built 20 years ago with substandard materials and are scheduled for redevelopment. It's probably one of the poorest districts in Shenzhen. But it's like where I grew up. Folks don't have a lot, but they have enough and no one is really hurting. It's very safe. I've explored a lot of those little back alleys at night with no problems. Our schools are new and well equipped, which is really where any money should go first. And it's a very close knit, nice neighborhood to live in. I really like here. The Swan Voyager can carry about 500 grams if you balance it right, enough for a GoPro or a small thermal camera. It's also enough for emergency cargo like test wires or insulin in emergency situations. 
Right now, as is, I could get a small package to or from a hospital all the way across town to my patio. That's pretty cool. Okay, now if you've ever flown a quadcopter, here's where things get a little different. The great thing about the Swarm Voyager is that with its 5,500 mAh battery, it can stay up about an hour compared to 20 to 30 minutes for most quadcopters in the same price range. But it can only do that if you use it in airplane mode. As soon as you hover, it starts burning full battery just like a quadcopter. So all your video shots should be framed around continuous forward movement. The Swan Voyager flies at around 11 to 25 meters per second. Slower than that, and you'll stall and need to go into hover mode. If you are used to shooting video with a quadcopter, it's going to take a bit before you figure out how to get those same shots with a Voltor craft so you can get the advantage of all that battery life. Okay, pros and cons. I'm going to voice over this because I have all this nice flying footage you can watch instead of me just sitting there talking to the camera, which I guess means the drone did its job and got me a nice video. Cons, no waypoints or route planning. As a way to differentiate the Swan Voyager from its higher end commercial models, this functionality was disabled by the manufacturer. All the hardware is perfectly capable of it. It just comes without those functions enabled and there's no upgrade path. It's strictly manual fight except for takeoff and landing. I disagree strongly with this choice and argue at length against it. The Swan Voyager will be an absolute instant purchase for small towns all over the world for disaster management, mapping, firefighting, search and rescue, wildlife and parks management, agriculture, if it could just be set to go up, fly a predetermined route, ch transmit video back and land without constant manual control. As is, the practical range of the Swan Voyager is about 8 kilometers because that's how far video transmission will work. Given its battery life, it could technically go as far as 45 kilometers. But since it doesn't offer waypoints or route planning, just real-time control, that's not really something you'll be able to do. You can get great intelligence for those 8 kilometers, but it's just not the absolute must-buy for small towns and cities that it would be with waypoints, which is a shame. The built-in 4K Pentium camera is decent, but not amazing. It's more than adequate for most YouTube channels, but anything a bit more professional, you'll be mounting a higher-end GoPro or something. Personally, I really like how the 360 camera worked out, but a 500 gram payload gives you options. Set up time. On location from suitcase to air, with a little practice, you're looking at about 10 minutes a bit more than your average quadcopter setup. So it's not really a run and gun setup where you can get it up in the air and get your footage before anyone shows up to tell you drones aren't allowed or something. That said, once it's up, you have almost a whole hour to shoot what you need, which is a huge advantage over quadcopters at any of event. Pros, cost. It is ridiculously cheap for the range, flight time, and payload it offers. Its price point, to be honest, makes most of my complaints a bit unfair and nitpicky, but I stand by them. That low cost comes with good value. Everything is well made, about the same quality as any DJI or Xiaomi product. The controller is rock solid and feels great, very well made. I haven't crashed it yet, but the advantage of this kind of construction is it's very fixable. Feel and sand, clamp and groove, you won't lose this to one back crash like some drones. I'm a huge, huge fan of the integrated controller. Frankly, after using this, I'd have a tough time going back to separate phone and remote style controllers. It's just so much easier to have an all-in-one unit. The payload, 500 grams, is quite a lot and gives you a lot of options as far as mounting cameras.
find a verdict. For me and my channel, the Swan Voyager is great. For you, it really depends on what you need a drone for. If you need to shoot video over a wide area or for more than a typical 20 minute flight time of a quadcopter, the Swan Voyager, the best game in town. If you are a wedding photographer and just need to get a drone out quick for five minutes of aerial B-roll, not the best idea. If you just want to go out for a day or flying with the family for fun, the flight time and range makes the Swan Voyager a great option. Personally, I really like it. It's perfect for the shots I need for my channel and I plan to use it for that. If you are interested, it's now on Kickstarter and the link is in the description box. That's it for today. Until next time, if I can do it, anyone can do it.